Hello and welcome to High Level Listening. We're Kat and Mark, two English teachers from the U.S. and the U.K., giving you side-by-side English to take your English listening, understanding, and speaking to the next level. And welcome to a fun new episode style that we're trying to put together here at High Level Listening. Always something new and exciting with us. Yes, we're calling it English Chat. And today we're chatting about the differences between American and British accents and pronunciation. This is a really popular topic for English learners, so we wanted to share with you what we think about it. We'll start with a bit of an English chat back and forth, asking each other questions about our accents. And then later in the second half, we'll show you more than 35 examples and words with both our different accents so you can start to hear the differences. As a fun game, and it's not because Mark and I are very competitive, we want to invite our students to comment on your favorite accent, British or American. Let us know in the comments below, and Mark and I will count the votes to find out high-level listening's most popular accent. (laughs) Like I said, it's not a competition, but I hope I win. (laughs) Um, We, I mean, no, I want to, me, me, American English, no. (laughs) Obviously, the British accent is everyone's favourite. Yeah, so let's start our little chat. We'll ask each other some questions about this topic to get us started. So, Kat, when I say the British accent, what are some of the first things that come to mind? Harry Potter. (laughs) (laughs) Fair. Harry Potter. Um, When I was a kid, probably the first time that I felt like I heard the British accent because I just live in a small town in Texas uh, was definitely Harry Potter. Now, when I was reading the books, I read it to myself in an American accent, obviously. But when I first watched the movie, I was just really confused. And I thought, everybody talk like this. (laughs) And then... Yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, so all these kids running around with these funny sounding accents and these funny voices. I wasn't really sure what a British accent was until much later in life, for sure. Mm. Yeah, it's one of our most popular exports, I would say. It's a British author. Uh, It was inspired by British schools. I think Mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling lived in Edinburgh or something when she was inspired to write it. So that's in the UK. And yeah, it's kind of one of the rare films where Almost all the cast is British, so they all have this British accent. Um, I heard that it was so British they actually made two versions of Harry Potter. Uh, There's an American edition and a British edition. Mm -hmm. And in the American edition, they changed some of the slang because American children and American readers wouldn't understand it. We would have no idea. Yeah, they tried to adapt and tried to help, but I still think, yeah, it's very British at heart. So... If I say the American accent, what's something that you think about? What's the first thing that you think of? Stop laughing. Why do we keep laughing? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think this is true for a lot of people. If you say, do an American accent, most people will say like, oh my God, that's so crazy. And I think that's like California. It is. It's It's like a California girl, Cali girl. Yeah. Yes. Right. And I think that's probably the number one accent. Um, but yeah, I could also think of Texas and then it's like a Southern accent and they're like, Hey y'all, y'all fixing a chow down, that kind of thing. I watch a lot of American sports, uh, especially mm-hmm. NASCAR, mm-hmm. which is all based in the South. So I'm quite familiar with that accent as well. But yeah, I think of TV, movies, mm. movie stars, Hollywood, and right. a lot of products, McDonald's, Burger King. <laughs> That's like America okay. for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Can you do a British accent at all? Oh, lovely, Pip Pip. Let's have a spot of tea. Very good. Well done. Yep, that's a citizenship test. See, you passed. <laughs> Is your passport? Yeah, I mean, congratulations. I bet. Are. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, before she passed away, uh, the Queen of England is who I thought of when I wanted to, or even. You know, like I said, Harry Potter. Um, Harry, Harry, what do you mean, Harry, Harry? And just, uh, you know, I would always try to mimic the kids uh, on 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 these movies. And I also think of kind of like the high class 
old fashioned movies like Pride and Prejudice. So, you know, this this old timey English, I barely even know what they're saying, um, but I just I love the accent. It feels so Jane Eyre. It feels so old fashioned and just just so beautiful and romantic when in reality, I don't think a lot of people talk like that in England. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. I think you're right. There's two main levels when people talk about a British accent. They either think really, really posh, posh mm. rich, old money, like the royal family, or yeah. like 19th century period dramas with Mr. Right. Darcy, yes. Jane Austen, <laughs> Pride and Prejudice, Bridgerton, mm. Downton Abbey. All of those are British shows and they yes. have the upper class English accent. Mm -hmm. The alternative is like, um, Mary Poppins, who's the, the cleaner, the chimney sweep from Mary Poppins. He's like, hello, governor. You're right. Cup of tea, bottle of water. That oh, is like oh, a oh. London. Yeah. That's like a London slang, which is mm. also English. And it's also in the South. Those mm -hmm. are the dominant accents for sure. But people tend to go one or the other. They go right. very posh, cup of tea, or very like slang, Worker. common. Yes cup of tea and there's nothing in the middle but the truth is british accents have a huge variety mm -hmm. um i also have a southern english accent which right. is similar to the bbc one the the most exported one but yeah those are the big stereotypes of the british accent um yeah i when i when it comes to my accent i think that because you know both of us have been english teachers for uh, over a decade now 10 years apiece I, I think that my accent has become a bit more neutral over the years. However, when I do go home, um, you know, most of my friends live in the big city. So I think they have a fairly neutral accent, especially for Texas. But we do have what's called a twang, a twang. Mm -hmm. And that just means a slight accent. You know, um, a southern twang would be kind of a southern way of talking. A northern twang would mean just a northern way of talking. I wouldn't say that the American accent is completely different from one side of the country to the other, but they do have kind of a style. There's definitely a style. I don't know if I could pinpoint exactly what makes them different, even from the American accent to the Canadian accent. There are a few words that are different. There are a few vocabulary words that are different. But overall, we have more or less the same accent. Just a little bit of a twang this way or a little bit of a twang that way. I feel like because I've been a teacher, I've needed to neutralize my accent so that I'm easy to understand and people can easily um, mimic me and learn the American accent that way. Uh, what do you think for you? Do you think that, I mean, we know this is true, that the British accent is not one thing that just changes over over the country, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same. Uh, as a teacher, it's important that you are clear and you can be understood. So, yeah, probably at the very beginning of my teaching career, I had a slightly thicker or stronger English mm -hmm. accent or Essex accent in the Southeast. And then if I tried saying words, like I remember my first class, uh, one of my students was coughing and I said, uh, do you need some water? Do you want some water? And the student was like, what? Some what? And I was like, ah, some, I had to do an American accent. Do you want some water? And they were like, oh yeah. Okay. So I learned the hard way that yeah, accents can get in the way. Accents can stop students understanding you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my accent is very neutral and very clear. Sometimes I meet people and they're like, oh, you're British, but I can understand you <laughs> because, yes. yeah, it's very diverse in the, in the UK. Almost every city has mm -hmm. its own accent. Like you mm. can go 20 kilometers or 30 kilometers away to another city and the people will sound a bit different. Mm -hmm. Some are really thick, especially if you go to the north, places like Liverpool. Scotland is another animal completely. I have family from Scotland and even sometimes I struggle to understand my uncle, for example. So yeah, there's a huge diversity in the UK. I think I have the typical English accent, 
But yeah, sometimes my students visit the UK on vacation or to work and they're kind of shocked uh, that a lot of people don't sound like me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is the challenge of the UK. It is very diverse. Not everybody slows down their language or grades their language to help you either. So yeah, coming to the UK, I think is a bigger challenge um, than visiting the US or Canada. I mean, do you ever struggle with a British accent? Definitely. Um, even as a native speaker, and I don't want to scare our students. I kind of want to make you feel a little bit better that it's not always easy for us either. If you watch lots of American TV and you only listen to the American accent, of course, when someone new comes into town and says something, you think, huh? Huh? what? Strange, yeah. different. Uh, oops. <laughs> And for me, especially if I'm traveling in the UK, I, I need a moment. I need a moment to start listening. So I think those little conversations that we start um, where the sentence is like five or six words and you say it immediately and you think, uh, <laughs> that's all you're going to say? I didn't, I didn't catch that at all. My brain completely stopped me from listening. I can't even mimic what you said. My brain said, oh, nope, that's foreign. I don't, I don't want that in me. <laughs> and so I think those are definitely the hardest conversations. But it, when I'm talking to a person and I get to listen to them for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, I can start to settle in a little bit better and I can start to understand them much better. Do you that's ever feel though. like you can't understand mm. an American accent? Right. It, it's in the same kind of situations where if I'm in a restaurant and mm. the waiter says the same question a hundred times a day, mm -hmm. so they say it really quickly and they walk up what to can the I table get and they're like, yeah, what can I get you started with some waters or something? And I'm like, uh, sorry, I need a second to, to catch that. Or I let everyone else go first so I can hear the questions ah, and I can, I see a few practice goes and then I'm ready. So I always order last <laughs> so everyone else can <laughs> go first and show me what to do. Makes sense. Uh, honestly, though, I think I've only met maybe one or two American people that I genuinely struggled to understand. Mm. Um, I think one was from Texas or, or from Arkansas and had a very thick drawl. Mm -hmm. like drawl, everything kind of sounded We kind of like talk was... in our mouths like this. Yeah. Yeah, it was mumbling almost. And so... I just laughed when he laughed. I smiled when he smiled and I just survived the conversation. It's the best then, you can do sometimes. Right. And then I, I met someone from New York who spoke really fast, mm -hmm. like really quick. Um, and I thought that was kind of a stereotype, but he spoke so quickly. We were also in quite a, a loud room. Uh, I don't know where we were, but again, I just couldn't understand him. He would say things and it was so fast. Uh, I just went, eh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right. I and yeah. I don't know what he was saying. I don't know what I was agreeing to. But yeah, generally, though, American accents are pretty easy. We grow up with them. They're in all the movies. They're in all the TVs. Mm. Uh, you notice that singers sing in an American accent? I always so, I always thought that was a myth. But then, you know, I do. Sometimes I'll, I'm so surprised to hear a singer uh, talk out loud. Like, Maybe Adele was the first time I heard someone sound like they were British. But some of her first songs <laughs> yeah. don't, she doesn't have a very thick accent when she sings. And I found that really interesting. Mm. Yeah, you can't tell. Uh, sometimes I find out a band is British and I'm like, oh, they're from England? Nice. Because singing, you can't tell. And mm. also British actors are very good at doing American accents. So yes. Brits are everywhere in Hollywood, but a lot I didn't of people even don't know. realize. I yeah. didn't even know. Um, mm -hmm. Is it is it easy to tell if someone, if like Americans doing a fake British accent? Yeah, it's funny. It only goes one way, it seems. British actors are really good at doing American. I can't tell. So, yeah, even Americans can't spot it. Uh, but going the other way, Americans doing a British accent? Uh, they hit weird. and miss. Mm. Yeah, like there are some, there are some some examples where the actors do a very good job. Um, Emma Stone does a really good one, to be fair. Oh, okay. But there are also some quite famous movies from the '90s where there's an American 
actor, but it's set in England and it's a fantasy or it's a medieval thing. And their accent is horrible. <laughs> and you think, how did they, how did they get away with this? Why did they I, choose this guy? The, it the, breaks funny, the, emotion. the funny thing is, is because, you know, there's 350 million people in the U.S. And then also Canadians don't sound that much different from us either. I mean, I feel like with everybody who has a little bit of a twang or a, just a little bit of a way of talking, I wouldn't say that their accent changes, but they just have a particular way of talking. I think that's why we're so forgiving. Also, because America is such a huge melting pot of people, people who, you know, are learning American English and have their own influence on the language. You know, groups of immigrants have come. You you colonized us. You'd think we'd have more of a British accent. But instead, we mm. just became a huge melting pot of people from all over the world that our, our accent is always shifting, I think. And so mm. it is kind of interesting. I think we're just mm. much more forgiving in America. You know, if someone says kind of a word funny, we're like, maybe they just talk yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's, that's just how they talk. That's fair. I think that's true because in England, your accent is a big part of your identity. Yes. Because, like I said, every city has its own right, accent. So right. my accent tells you where I'm from. Mm. And actually, you're, you're expected to keep your accent. So there are examples of my friends in the South. They went to university in the North. Like I had a friend who went to Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool has a very strong accent and a very unique one. So when she came back after three years, her accent was a little bit different. Mm. And we all made fun of her. Uh. We were like, oh, you're a scouser now, are you? <laughs> and so changing your accent just a little bit can, yeah, change who you your are. Personality. And, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, your personality. Exactly. Exactly. Your personality and what we think. And it's also, if you are from the north, perhaps, and you move south and you lose your northern accent, mm -hmm. people in your hometown might be like, oh, so you're not proud of your northern accent? Oh, um, you want to be southern, do you? you you're very ignoring interesting. us, you're forgetting your past, are you embarrassed? What is it? So your accent is really strongly linked right, kind of right. to your identity. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's why we're more critical about it and why we're more focused on it, because yeah. we're always like, where are you from? Where are you really mm -hmm. from? Where did and, you grow up? And like, Americans, we're so silly. We always say, I don't have an accent. You have an accent. <laughs> Yes. Right. They're like, yeah. oh, I love the American accent. What accent? I don't have an accent. <laughs> because yeah, we all we good. all kind of sound quite similar. Again, there are nuances. There are little bits that tell you, oh, this person is from this town, this person. But for the most part, the North American accent for most people sounds just about the same with a little bit. If someone from the north came down, they might say a couple of words, but we really more in the United States, it's more of a city thing versus the countryside. So I feel like people from the city in general talk a bit faster. Maybe they enunciate a bit more. They're probably meeting people from all over the United States, even all over the world. So we tend to lose our accent a little bit just to like I did just to sound very clear to everyone around us. But then if you live in a small town or in the countryside, maybe you're more likely to talk a bit slower and to, you know, have a more distinct accent or like kind of you said, a little bit of a mumbling sound because you kind of talk a little bit slower. Um, mm -hmm. So and I, I wouldn't say it's always a north versus south thing because you know, California and the West uh, have a different accent a little bit. Um, but overall, I mean, we're just one big, happy, non-accent American family. From <laughs> it's become what accent? A what accent? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's definitely true in the UK as well. If you go to the rural countryside, when you get into the countryside, the accents get stronger mm -hmm. and the dialects become thicker. Uh, definitely true in the southwest of England. They even have their own language, technically, but it's very rare. And so, yeah, if you're in the city, yeah, you're exposed and maybe it's necessary to speak clearly. 
because you're dealing with people from other countries who maybe don't speak English as a first language. So yeah, mm -hmm. maybe people in cities are, are like teachers. They need to neutralize their language or mm. neutralize their accent a little bit to be understood. Okay, so now we can do something a bit more structured to help you really hear the differences between British English and American English. We've chosen over 35 useful everyday words that can sound quite a bit different from accent to accent. All of these words have the same meaning. All of these words have the same meaning. Also, almost all of them, except for yogurt, have the same spelling as well. So this will really be helpful for you to hear the difference between one word and the other. I'll start with my American accent. I'll say the word twice. And then Mark will share his British accent and he'll repeat it twice as well. Okay, so let's go through our list back and forth, back and forth, all the way through the 35 words. Laugh. 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 Answer. 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 Chance. 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 Dance. 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 Talk. 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 Walk. 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 Leisure. 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 Water. 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 Vitamin. 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 Banana. 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 Herb. 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 Pasta. 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 Taco. 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 Now this one has a spelling change. Yogurt. 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 Tuna. 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 Tomato. 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 Mom. Mom. Mum. Mum. The British version is spelled M U M. The American one is M O M. Brother and sister. Brother and sister. Brother and sister. Brother and sister. Aunt. 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 Doctor. 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 Teacher. 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 Job. 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 Career. Career. 
Korea. Korea. Law. 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 Reporter. 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 Vase. Vase. But also vase. Mm. Vase. Me too. In British, vase. Vase. Mirror. 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 Bath. 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 Garage. 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 Mobile. 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 Battery. 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 Zebra. 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 Squirrel. 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 One's cute. <laughs> Giraffe. 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 Jaguar. 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 I can't believe squirrel is so cute. <laughs> Squ squirrel. The American squirrel is really hard to say. Squirrel. 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 The American one. Squirrel. squirrel. Yeah. So and what hard. do you say? Squirrel. A squirrel. squirrel. There's a squirrel in the garden. A squirrel. <laughs> yeah. My mom hates so squirrels. Weird. I. Yeah. I. I don't think I've ever heard you say that. That is so funny. So squirrels. Squirrels in the garden with the birds. Okay. So there you go. We have lots of words here with pretty big differences from the U.S. and the U.K. accents. Thank you so much for joining kind of our fun English chat. We hope that you could spot some differences uh, between our two accents, and hopefully this will help you with your understanding and listening skills between British and American speakers. Yes, uh, we would love to do more of these English chats. So if you have any fun ideas or topics that you would like us to talk about, if you want the opinions uh, and insights of native speakers, then please let us know in the comments. We will read all of them. We'll take any suggestions on board and we might consider your idea and turn it into a video. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.